just Amen. surrender our heart and just welcome the spirit of revelation. Father God, we thank you for grace and mercy. We thank you for everything you are doing, Father. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name for everything you have done and you will do for the spirit of revelation for what you continue to do among us. We bless your name. Hey, we bless your name. Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of our midst in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for everything in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 So I want to welcome you for the uh, last watch, the watch of 3 p.m. Amen. Amen. And today I have a very interesting subject, and I want us. Um, I think in the in the weeks that are coming, I will do. I will be dealing a lot with prayer. Amen. Amen. Because we want our prayer to be answered. We want our prayer to be answered. Amen. So we need to learn more on how to pray the, the, yes. the, the way we have effective, you know, prayer. Hallelujah. And today the, 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 the subject is the prayer of authority. But before getting to the prayer of authority, we do some game together. We do some exercise together for us to understand very well what is it to have a life of prayer? Because the Bible says we need to pray always. Mm -hmm. If we don't know how to pray, it's a problem. That means we can do the continuous error every time. Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I will ask you to prepare each one at your own house. You take a blank sheet of paper or if you have a notebook, I want you to prepare a prayer list like a your request of prayer, you put them on the paper. So you put for personal, for ministry, for whoever you pray for, if it's for your children, if it's for husband, if it's whatever, you put it down there. Whatever request of prayer you have, do it. Okay. So now let's learn about prayer. I don't know if you are able to, yes. Thank you, Sister Josie. She's helping me with the, the slide. Amen. And uh, uh, Michelle, if you are not too busy, when we come to a verse, you will just read it for us. You make it easy. Amen. No problem. Amen. So prayer is the main activity of a Christian. However, we still must learn how to pray. Before coming to the prayer of authority, because we always do prayer of authority in the ministry of deliverance, Let's learn about the position of prayer. Position of prayer. The position of prayer is the position of ascension. That means what? You pray from being in the heavenly realms. You don't pray from the earth. I will, I will explain. You can only pray in the heavenly sphere. Whenever you leave the heavenly realm, you lose the position of prayer. You may pray, but that prayer does not count before God. If you can open uh, for that, uh, Michelle, if you can go and keep it open because we read a lot of Ephesians 2. Can you read? Um, I think it's... I put it down here. A position in heavenly realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I will get it. I will get to you and then I will see. But we are sitting in heavenly realms. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Let an example. And I will take some of you to help me also. If we have a country, in a war in the country, and let's say it's Germany against England. We don't say they are coming. We have a prophecy of that and everything. We just say an example. Okay, and the soldier of Germany are praying, Father God, give us this victory, give us this victory, give us a victory of beating England. And we go, we travel, we go to Great Britain in England, and England a soldier are praying, Father God, give us victory, give us victory, give us victory. 
to win Germans? What do you think the father will answer? I'm asking the question. Let me, let me see. Benson, Benson, you are the first on my list here. What do you think the father will answer? Um, I think that's a very tricky one because like there's lots of life on both sides. But then like I think you would go with those who pray for him like from my knowledge of the Bible with the Israelites and oh, you go with those closest to him. Okay. Okay. Now you know that Israelite was praying the true God and the other were not praying the true God. They have given the God. Okay. Yeah. It's good. I take your answer, but it's not the right one. Okay. Okay. How you answer to that? Let me yeah, thank you for muting. God God is not foolish. That is the first we need to understand. Be a righteous God, he will not foolishly answer an unjust prayer. Why it is an unjust prayer? Because it's an earthly prayer. It's a prayer that is not from the heavenly realms. It's a prayer that is on earth. Every prayer you do on earth and you are just thinking about yourself. Father, Father, it's for me. It's for me. It's for me. It's an earthly realm. It's a prayer based on your emotion. It's a prayer based on your own anger. This is the number one error we do. We do a lot of prayer based on our own emotion. So, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Michelle, can you read Ephesians 2, 6? Amen. Ephesians 2, 6. Do you have a particular version there? Ephesians 2, verse 6. Okay. Not a version, any kind of version. Any kind, no problem. Amen. Ephesians 2, verse 6 reads, <clears throat> And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together in the heavenly sphere in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. He raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Every time you pray a prayer and you are not sitting in the heavenly places, you are not praying according to the will of God. You are praying according to your own selfishness or anything that is emotional. It is an earthly prayer. Amen? God does not answer earthly prayer. He answers prayer from ascension. You have to be seated in heavenly places. So when we pray, we need to settle the problem of position of prayer before we pray. If you remain on earth, you will have no way to pray. For the position of prayer is not on earth. Without the position, one cannot perform the task of praying. Many times people ask, why didn't God answer a prayer? Brother and sister, most likely it is because you have lost your standing of prayer. That means, let me come back to the question I asked to Benson. You have an argument. Let's say uh, I have an argument with Benson. Benson has an argument with me. And we go and we start praying, each one on his corner. Father, you need to, 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 to judge, or I need to judge Benson. Father, you need to judge Reverend Paulette. Father, you need to do something. God will not answer to both of us. It's an earthly prayer. Based on emotion, based on anger, he will not answer us. A lot of Christians get into that, and it's why the prayer are not answered. And you keep waiting that something will strike you, the person in front of you, and nothing strikes the person, because God is not into that. So, we have to understand that it may be that you still have, if you still have a little anger, agitation, causing you to argue for yourself and ask God to avenge you or vindicate you, this proof that you have left the heavenly sphere. Every time you 
disregard your position in heaven and you come to things that has to do. You may think that, oh, it's not flesh. It's something God needs to settle. It's something God needs to address. Trust me, you are already on earth. And being on earth, he does not answer that one. The position of prayer is entirely a heavenly position. You cannot have a bit of jealousy. You cannot have anger. You cannot have spite. Once these things are found in your prayer, immediately you are not in the heavenly realm. As soon as God finds anger, he finds bitterness, he finds resentment in your prayer, you are disqualified for heavenly realm. You come back on earth, and the prayer you do on earthly realm are in vain. You are not burning the incense in the holy place. You may be burning incense on the street, being holy on the earth and in the world. Hence, we have, we, you may always be able to do and say things freely on all occasions because we have freedom in every occasion except in prayer. In prayer, you are not free to do what you want to do. In prayer, you have a position of prayer. You have to pray from heaven to earth, not from earth to heaven. The prayer of a soulish man is from earth to heaven. You are crying to God. Do you see what they did to me? Do you see what my parents did to me? Do you see what this person did to me? Do you see what this auntie did to me? Do you see what they did against me? That is an earthly prayer. You have to be in the heavenly pray place in order for you to have answer of prayer. Prayer is not only a holy ground, but even more, is a spiritual realm. You don't communicate to God in an earthly realm. You have to go to a place where you can have an answer. If you just want to do noise, a lot of people are doing noise. You have to understand the mystery of prayer in order to have an answer to your prayer. The position of prayer is heavenly. Once you leave the heavenly sphere, you lose the position of prayer. Amen. Now, let me do an exercise from you. And uh, Justin, you can open the line. I will ask some questions and I want the answer. Amen. I'm going by the list I have. Uh, Dedra? If Dedra, you yes. can open your mic. Yes, let me yes. ask you a question. I hope you are not walking. No, I'm driving, but it's fine. Okay. I can hear you. Okay. Let me ask you, this is just an exercise to see what are the prayers that qualify or that don't, does not qualify, and we can remove them. If they are on your list, remove them. A couple is a Christian couple, okay? They are Christian, yes. both are Christian. They have an argument, and they start quarreling. You come in, and you listen to the wife, and you have empathy toward the wife. You have compassion. You decide to pray for the husband. Perhaps to change or something like that. Will your prayer be heard based on what I said? Yes. Okay. She said yes. Who else can help her? I'm, I'm praying for the husband or I'm praying for the couple. It's what I say. How you will formulate in order. I say you are praying for the husband. Will your prayer be heard? Is yes. it an earthly prayer or is it a heavenly prayer? Um, it's an earthly prayer. Exactly. Both of them are Christian. You cannot pray and take a part of someone and have an answer. You cannot. Amen. Okay, I'll go to the next one. Okay, Benson, you did already. Frank. Okay, and Dedra, you can mute your mic. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you for helping. Frank, if you can open your mic, if you are free. Mm -hmm. There is an unfortunate exchange between two brothers of the church. I'm giving an example for you to see. Mm -hmm. Where you are going to? You are going to a church and two, pe two people are arguing. Same church. One confide to you. You feel his right and decide to take the matter to prayer. Will your prayer be heard? 
prayer in 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 what directions for forgiveness for like what you just tell me which which direction will be heard in this example you feel like the person who's telling you the story is right okay so is it an earthly he's, he's, he's telling me the argument am i in the argument or not he's telling you the argument what happened mm -hmm. and you say let me take it to prayer i would ask god to to ask me what to what to tell him or what what how to minister to him exactly that is the right answer there mm -hmm. you will not take part of it because it's earthly mm -hmm. it's emotional a lot of prayer are emotional is why they are not answered the person come with anger pour it on you without knowing they say, where to are together in my name, whatever they agree on. If you agree with his anger, you are earthly also. You'll be earthly bound. Your prayer cannot be heard. Amen. That is good, friend. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'll go to the next. I'm giving different examples for you to understand why some prayer are not answered. Uh, Jennifer, I don't know if you are free or you're at work. Okay. I'm, go I'm going to work. Oh, you are going to work. Okay, let me. Yeah. But can you hear or you want me? Yeah, to yeah, I can hear. Okay, Jennifer, listen to this story. A man has a misunderstanding with his parents, and he sees that one of his parents has a strange behavior and maybe an occultist. He comes to you very afraid and even scared on contacting that parent. You decide to take the matter in prayer. Will your prayer be heard? Mm, no, he's angry, isn't it? Yes. No. Yes. You have always to go back to God and ask what is his opinion on this matter. He's afraid. He's scared. Amen? Amen. And this will help us when we are praying for people, when we are, we are exchanging prayer requests, we have to be careful what you agree on is very important. I'm going to the next, thank you, Jennifer. I'm going to Joyce. I don't know if you, you, you can hear me. Joyce. Yes, I can hear you, Ralph. Okay. A divorced couple has argument for the behavior of the children when they stay with each one of the parents. So one week with one parent, the other week with the other parent. But they have argument the way they treat the children. One is a Christian. The other one do not believe at all. The Christian come to you for prayer. It's a Christian who come to you for prayer, Joyce. And you decide yes. to pray. Will your prayer be answered? No. Okay. Can you tell me why? Um, first of all, the other partner is not a believer. Mm -hmm. So it's very tricky for him. Mm -hmm. uh, for the woman, because the woman is the one who's praying, who came to me. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't so, think the yes. prayer will be had. Okay. It's an earthly we, prayer. Exactly. We need to identify prayer. earthly prayer. We need to identify earthly prayer and remove them from our list, because there will not be answer. Yes. We need to remove those. And there's a lot of those. There's a lot of those in the prayer requests of Christian. It's why the prayer are not answered. Let me take the last one, Nompilo. Nompilo. I create a, a, fic, a fictional person as Anna. I just say Anna. Now, Anna come to you, Nompilo, with a Bible open and say, I want you to pray for me in agreement. Okay? Pray with me in agreement. She said, look, I've been praying to solve this matter for a while. The Bible says, this is what she said to you, James 5, 16. Confess your sin to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful result, results. Mm -hmm. Could your prayer be answered if you take from that point? Yes, Rev. Okay. Based on what? Tell me. 
Um, based on based on the, the scripture in James 5, like you just said, if they come with the Bible open and they're confessing their sins to me, and then we're going on to Matthew 18, um, Matthew 18, 19 to 20, 21, and then we pray because I'm coming in agreement with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's but what as I, you come in agreement, do you know if she's a righteous person? Um, I, I would, I would know, but they've, they've, they've come to confess, right? With they come to confess, but either, either, or you need to ask God. Okay. Okay. Because they can come to confess. Many people will come to deliverance. They come confessing certain parts. They don't confess it all. Mm, okay. And when we ask God, God always unveil what is hidden. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of people, like I have a lady who came for uh, five, she has fibro and she, they want to do surgery. She confessed, I don't know, I'm working hard in this country, nothing's happening, I have this problem at home, witchcraft this, witchcraft that. As soon as I want to join my hand with her, Holy Spirit put on her forehead fornication. And I look at her, I say, why you fornicate and you come here? Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. If I have not consulted God, I will be in agreement with her sin. Because she never said she was sinning. Oh, no. You get me? Mm-hmm. Why most prayer are earthly is people take us by emotion. People take us by what they, they feel, what is happening. And they themselves, they cannot get into the heavenly realm. Why? Because they are bound by the emotion. Amen. When someone say confess your sin to each other and pray for each other so you may be healed, that is true. If she confess, she can be healed. That is true. The earnest prayer of a righteous person. Earnest. Some people don't pray with earn. Uh, how you say that? With um. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. Yes. They pray once only, and they want the answer right away. Two. Some people are not righteous, but they come to you for prayer. And they want to agree, especially that agreement prayer is good, but you have to make sure that the person agreeing with you is not trying to trick you into a trap of the enemy. Wow, Amen. All of those are important. Why prayer answer or not? So for any promise to be claimed on, you need to be sure that you are filling the position described in the Bible verse and pray from a position of heavenly realms. If not, your prayer will not be heard. Second now, we will do the prayer of authority. But before doing the prayer of authority, we need to study the authority of prayer. The authority of prayer. What is the authority of prayer? As the position of prayer is ascension, we know already we pray from heaven to earth, not from earth to heaven. If you have any question, just write it down. We take it at the end. The authority of prayer is also ascension. With the position of prayer, there is an authority of prayer. If you pray from heaven to earth, your prayer has authority already. Because you are sitting there. Whatever a Christian does is not only a matter of power, but even a matter of authority. When you pray, You want the things to happen according to your prayer. That is authority. For example, when preaching the word, you need not only power, but also authority. This is the truth that the one who pray with God, we have also, if it's God who's asking you to pray and you are doing his will, the power of God will back you up. This is why we have the grace and new beginning ministry. We can do deliverance of the phone. Why? The power of God is backing us up. We are praying from heavenlies. We are not praying from earthly. So when the enemy tries to, uh, 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 to trap us on the earthly realm, we say, no, we are with Jesus. The one who still deliverance is the Holy Spirit. We are not from earth. So there's no way he can trap us on earth. And we don't get by the emotion of people. We don't go there by the emotion of people. Amen? So people often say that in prayer, you need to remove sin because the error we do most of the time, I have done that error also. We think that if we remove the sin and we ask forgiveness for this, forgiveness for all, right away, 
we have authority. That is not true. That is not true. We need to ask the opinion of God. Is God will give you the okay. Is God will tell you, now you can go. Amen. So you can pray, you can remove sin, you can have faith, you, have, you can hold on to God's promise. But what happened? Gradually you will see that that will not work. You may have been full of faith, yet God did not bring what you pray for to pass. You held on to God's promise, yet the promise also fell. It is a matter of seeing the position of prayer through God's visitation. That is a second angle. First is the position. Where are you praying from? When you say, I want to pray for this, I want to pray. You are praying from heavenly realms. That is number one. Two, do you know the opinion of God on that problem you are praying for? That is number two. A lot of us pray from emotion. And we don't pray from the, what God has said. Amen. The decision of God. You will then be able to perform the task of prayer in the heavenly realm. That means what? No pillow, you can come to me. I see you say, I want deliverance. I give you three days dry. That three days already, I know what you will do inside you if you do them faithfully. I give you verse of prayer to prepare your heart for that prayer. So when I meet you in deliverance, your heart is revealed to me. The enemy is revealed to me because you have done already the preparation. During the time I give you the three days, me myself also open up to God and say, God, show me what is wrong with Nompilo so I can help her. This is your daughter. You know her from the beginning. So before the three days, if God tell me that I don't agree with this deliverance, trust me, I will call you and I will say, Nompilo, I cannot pray for you. Why? I hear from God what he said. And he said, don't pray for non-pillow. If you tell me, Reverend, I need prayer. I take my, my, my phone and I start pa, 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 going left, right, left, right, left, right. Is God in that one? I don't know anything about what really happened. I'm doing earthly prayer. I am doing earthly prayer. I need to ask God, what do you have to say? So I repeat, it is a matter of seeing the position of prayer. That is one. You have to be in the heavenly realm, not emotional, true. Through God's visitation. What did God say about the case we are praying? Don't just say it's in the Bible. What did God say about that case? Because we have many promises in the Bible. Some were done to Abraham. Some were done to Adam. Some were done, but they were done to Adam. Are you sure it's done to you too? Because a lot of us take the Bible lightly. You live the way you want, and you want the Bible to agree with you. You will not agree. There's some things that are written. Like Banks say, it's in the fine writing. What is it say there? Is it for you too? So for some you pray and God will say, I don't agree with that. In order for him to have that, I give this condition or that condition. But you, you already promised a person that, no, it will be fine in Jesus' name, just go home. It's a lie. Amen. So, your prayer from the heavenly room is a prayer of authority. What is God's visitation? Uh, let me go back there. What is God thinking about what I want in this prayer? I want red shoes. Let's say I want red shoes. I want so much red shoes. I put red shoes in all of my prayer. You say, ask and you should receive the desire of your heart. You say, delight in me. And, I, and you keep asking for red shoes. And I start bombarding heaven to have red shoes. Father, give me my red shoes. I want the red shoes. What is God thinking about those red shoes? is where I need to take the key for prayer. If God has not said anything about it, I'm wasting my time. So a lot of us are just standing and going by. It is promised. It is promised in the Bible. Let me read it 10,000 times. You can read it 10,000 times. What God say about it is what you need to look for. First, when you arrive at this place, you will know that there are certain things for which you cannot pray. 
because God does not allow you to do so. The most you can do is to discuss such a matter with God. You remember when I asked Frank, Frank said, no, I will ask God. Because you need to discuss the matter you want to pray for. If not, you are going on earthly base. Oh God, may I pray for this matter. If you will, please bring it to pass. But you must not say, oh God, you must do this. For I have laid hold of your promise. It's in the Bible. Trust me, there's some promise that are in the Bible. Given to some people of the Bible, but not to you. I know I'm shocking some today. Why is it that at times when you pray in this way, no answer come? You did not ask God what is his opinion. This is not only a matter of dealing with sin, confessing your wrong, but a matter of asking, where are you? What is your nature? What kind of atmosphere are you in when you are praying? If you are in the realm of the heaven, I am certain that eight out of ten of your prayer will be eliminated. Mostly, when you look at your list now, there's certain you want to erase already. Because you know that it was just emotional. For they are unnecessary. And you will not be able to pray them. The more you grow in the Lord, the more you realize that prayer has its position here. So you pray based on what God says, not what you think or feel about it. Father, I want to pray. I want to have this because, 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 because. No, what God say about it is very important. It's very important. I remember when, uh, when I was younger and I want to, very young, I think I was like in my 22, 24, and I want to get married to a man. And I keep crying, and I keep crying. Because guess what? As soon as I ask God, he said no. He said no. Not this one. Another one will come. But this one, I said no. He said the family is in too much, too much thing. I cannot let you be in this family. It's a cursed family. And I keep insisting. I keep, he said no. We have to know the opinion of God. And when the opinion of God is, you just leave it alone. You don't need to go in 10,000 church to tell you the same thing. The prayer of authority. Our prayer, like I say, in ascension, a prayer of authority. We know that prayer in ascension is a command to God. You can comment. Let me go there. Uh, uh, can you uh, go to Isaiah 45, 11, Michelle? So our prayer is not begging but commanding because you are from a position of rulership. You are sitting in heavenly places close to God. Everything you say there is a comment. Michelle? Sorry, Rev. I'm here. Okay. Isaiah 45, 11. Amen. Okay, then. Sorry, give me a second. Okay. Isaiah 45, 11 reads, Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands, you command me. Amen. He said, concerning the work of my hand, what happened? He says, ask me. Okay, ask me is for the first. Oh, sorry. He says, concerning the work of my hands, you command me. Uh-huh. What you should ask first? First, you must ask him of the things to, uh, to come. The things to come. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And then he so says, you, let me mm -hmm. give an example. You continue to read. Mm -hmm. You want to get married. Give me an example. You want to get married. Mm -hmm. I want to bring this in front of the Lord. I want to bring... Ask him for the things to come. Let him mm -hmm. confirm it in his visitation to you. Tell you, Michelle, this is a person you need to marry. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, mm -hmm. for the work of his hand, what are the work of his hand? It can be, anyone can answer. Uh, Ogo, or Onita, or Pekle, what is the work of his hand? 
Hey, these people, you try to Google in front of me. <laughs> that is the work of his hand. Let me give you an example. Is it, is it not the rest of his creation, Rev? It could be the rest of his creation. Mm -hmm. It could be... Oh, the, oh, I, can say it, I, I can say that it could be the, the man that he had prepared for Michel. Mm, he can, yeah, he can call the man he has prepared for Michel too. It could be that. But command, <laughs> let me give you an example. Moses in front of the Red Sea, what he did? He commanded the sea to be split. To exactly. Mm -hmm. That is the work of his hand. Mm -hmm. You can command the element of nature. His creation is all of the creation. You can command a tree to dry. You can cast mm -hmm. up a mountain in the river, in the, in the sea. Is all of those are the comment you can comment his work. That is a position where you are. So sometimes this commanding is a direct command to God, and sometimes it's an indirect command to the environment. Example: you have Moses standing on the shore of the Red Sea, commanding the water to divide. The Lord Jesus in the boat, commanding the wind and the sea to be still. The Lord commanding sickness to leave people. Those are the commands you can have. Joshua commanding the sun. Elijah asking the father, the fire to come down, mm -hmm. burn the altar. All of those are commands. It's from the position where you are sitting in heavenly places that you can command. Amen. So, Reverend King. Oh, I cannot hear. Sorry. I was saying, so, so uh -huh. does that mean that in the example that you used about marriage, uh -huh. I can command for the angels to put fire under my husband so he can come quickly? That is, that is very funny, but you know it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not <laughs> you ask the grace of God only because you have to ask God what is his opinion. Amen. 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 So if you have learned to pray by standing in the realm of ascension, you can even command poverty to leave you. Command it. You command anything that is disturbing you to leave. You are not there imploring. You are commanding. I hope we understand the difference between commanding and begging. Because the beg, a lot of people do prayer or supplication where they need to do authority, author, because they don't trust God. So they are begging God, please do this for me. Please, please. God told you for certain things you comment. Don't start begging when they are asking you to comment. Okay? So, you are not just a beggar asking men for a little money. No. If you have touched the heavenly position with his authority, you can even say, I command the poverty to depart from me. This is not your imagination. Amen? It's not your imagination. So what is a prayer of authority? It is a prayer by one who can give out commands by standing in the position of ascension. I decree and it is established. That is Job twenty-two twenty-eight. 28. That is the way you rule. You decree and it is established. You decree and it is established. But guess what? It is the will of God. Hallelujah. It is the will of God. It's different from emotional prayer. It's different from joining someone who hates the other one and who wants the person to be punished and everything. It is different. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shine upon thy ways. You transform. You bring transformation. Amen. There's a lady who came to me for prayer the last time. I was in the middle of almost sleeping and the phone ring. And this person is telling me, just at the sound of her voice as she's speaking, she's emotional because she has been suffering from oppression of the enemy. She has palpitation. The enemy came after her, took almost everything. Her son died and she started losing things, left and right, left and right. As she's speaking, the Lord is giving me direction. It's not because she's speaking. 
The Lord is telling me, I sent her to you. You have to free her. Never heard, never heard her story, nowhere and everything. He just gave me the green light. He said, I want you to free her in my name. So I said, okay, can you look for tissue? She said, oh, uh, I don't know. And my husband was there. What is funny, he heard the story before I even start talking to the lady. He said, ask her to look for a bucket. And I, I looked at him. And the lady took a bucket, put it in front of her. As we start praying, not fast minute, a deliverance you cannot imagine. Why? As soon as she starts speaking, the Lord gave me the okay. He said, I want you to free her. So the authority has been given already. The power also has been given. What I do, I just obey. I heard already what the Father has to say from heaven. I hope you understand. All of us are in that place of position. We need just to understand that we have to remove emotion. We have to remove our own understanding. We have to remove manipulation because you cannot manipulate God. Guess what? You pray for something, you think you are tricky. God gives it to you by grace. It's not because you manipulate him. So we have to be careful. Prayer of authority. Because our spiritual condition today is low, the spiritual condition of a lot of Christians are low. Very few among the children of God know and fewer practice this kind of prayer where you ordain something and happen. But if we go on properly in the Lord, we will realize that we are in the holy place, not the outer court. You remember the outer court is almost everybody will come in and out. There will be a, a lot of noise. But as the priests go in, the holy place is the only one there in the presence of God, in the light of God. He communes with God. He's the only one. But the outer place is where you hear all kinds of stories. It's where you hear. And sometimes, trust me, I like to pray for someone I don't know anything about that person because I hear clearly the voice of God. But when I pray and I know already your story, sometimes I'm afraid that I will be influenced by what you say. But if I pray for you and God tell me directly, Paulette, you need to go left, you need to go right, you need, it's the best thing I can do. It's just I follow the Holy Spirit and it's happening because the order is already given to me. Amen? So we, we also realize that we are in the realm of ascension and cannot be touched by numerous things. We are together with the Lord in the room of ascension and on the throne. Therefore, we can give orders and command everything according to the law will. Whatever we pray from such a position is an order, is a command. Is a command. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to the next. The prayer on the throne. Do you know when you are sitting, in the heavenly place, Pekle, when you are sitting, you are sitting on the throne. You are sitting next to Jesus. You are sitting on the throne. And guess what? Sitting on the throne, you rule. When I say, I know, I remember you remind me that I say you are a judge. You are ruling Amen. on the throne. It's not something that you need to negotiate. It's an authority you receive from heaven. So when you come to the point where you have the heavenly position and the heavenly authority, and you are able to say authoritative prayers, you are one who is on the throne, standing in the ruling position together with the Lord. Just as he reigns, at the right hand of God, so you also reign together with him in the heavenly realm. That is the heavenly realm. That is the position that Satan is fighting in your life. Why? Because he doesn't want you to realize who you are. So if you keep having problem of earthly bound, be angry, resentment, insecurity, and everything, you never get to your position. You never, you will never be judging anyone on your emotion and it will go, it will, it will go somewhere. 
currently your prayer is not only an authoritative prayer, but also a reigning prayer. Your prayer is to rule with authority. So in summary, there is only one position of prayer is the heavenly sphere. So all of the requests you have, if you don't know that God has given you already his position on, uh, on them, put between parentheses, ask God first. Write down, ask God first. And stop praying those prayers until you ask God first. Ask God his will. What is his opinion on those prayer requests? Ask God first. He needs to tell you. If he doesn't answer, take the time to fast and ask him. Don't go and start praying those prayers when God has not tell you what he wants to do in that. Amen. Once you leave this fear, you lose the position of prayer. Prayer is not only concerned with certain matter, but much more. It is concerned with a certain position. You need to be in the heavenly sphere, I say again. Then you have the position to pray. You can pray with authority, and you are the one sitting on the throne, saying for prayer of the throne. The Lord wants us to be more effective. It's why he's teaching us this. Pray from a position of the throne. I'm ruling because I hear God. This is his opinion concerning this person. So in the name of Jesus, I'm declaring. And as I declare, it is established. She read already Ephesians 2, 6. He has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So now, could our problems be the fact that as we assume being on heavenly room, we try to pray an earthly prayer? Yes. The only prayer that prevails is the will of God. Even if the will was established after a settlement with God, I explained. The will of God was, like for Abraham, he said, I will burn Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham said, hey, I have my, my nephew there. I have this person there. He started negotiating and asking God in his will, can you change? Can you change? Can you change? If you find 100 people, if you find 20 people, if you find 10 people, if you find... That is in order for God to change. You understand? And trust me, if God has found enough people that Abraham has requested, he could change. But he was negotiating. You will not come and say, no, God, and you start talking your own way. No. The will of God is what you pray. Let's take your prayer list, like I say. Which of these prayer requests you have asked God about? For any of them, you have not received a visitation of God yet. Put a parenthesis and write, ask God first. Ask God first. Amen. Amen. For the earthly one, cross them out. The one you know is earthly. It's because I was angry with this cousin. Because I was angry with the other person. Because I was angry with the cross it out. Because the Bible says in the New Testament, love your enemy. If the person has to die, God will make sure you make justice. Amen. So for the one with visitation, what is the promise of God you are standing on? As soon as you say, okay, I receive the promise of God on that. What is the promise of God you are standing on? He gave you a promise, okay, I saw myself in the dream. This was my promise. Now, I ask you, go also in the Bible, something confirming your promise, you add it to that. Then you can pray based on what is written in the Bible and what you have heard God telling you. These are two. Amen. Two arguments you can bring in prayer and at the court of heaven. Amen. So, let's go to the next. Prayer of authority. I show you already the prayer of authority based on your position. Prayer to the element of God. I gave example. Now, prayer of authority against the enemy of God. Because guess what? The enemy you are fighting is the enemy of God. 
is not someone who's not talking to you. It's not a family member who's not talking to you. It's not the husband who who's, is not talking to you since or oh, whatever happened. Is the enemy is the enemy of God. He's the one you are fighting. Ephesians 6. Ephesians uh, 6, yeah. You know, we are not flesh, uh, fighting flesh and, and, and blood. So in the Bible, Michelle, start looking for 1 John 3, 8. In the Bible, it is very great principle that God himself does not deal with Satan directly. That is another thing we learned today. God will not deal with Satan directly. God will send men to, 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 to fight Satan. Let me explain to you. He used men. Some may say, isn't God dealing with Satan through his son? Look what happened. If uh, 1 John 3, 8. Michelle, can you read? 1 John 3, 8 reads, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Amen. What we are learning here is, God himself did not say from heaven, let me destroy Satan and all of his angels and finish with him. No. They say Jesus was manifest. That means he became a man in order to fight Satan. He became a man in order to destroy Satan. He became a man. That means that when you are fighting the enemy of God, God will use you and me. Hallelujah. That is one of the errors we, are, we, are, we have sometimes. God is telling you, Michelle, you have warfare in your family. I'm taking just your example because your mic is open. You have an enemy in your family and the strong man manifests like that, like that, like that. Some people, instead of fighting, standing and say, okay, God, what I need to do? Let me order this on some, uh, uh, on, how you say, on circumcised Philistine to know who is God. <laughs> You look, you start crying. You say, oh God, how you can do this? This man has been killing also. He has come after this. After You start crying every day. But you are the one who has to take action. Nobody else will take action except you. This is why you are born in the family, Michelle. This is why you are learning all of what you are learning. Because God prepared a man in your family or a woman in your family to destroy Satan that is tormenting your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to understand that God will use us to destroy the work of Satan in our family. And you are taking the decision and you are fighting from heaven. You are not fighting from earth. Some people sometimes when they tell me it's just that I'm polite. I have to, hey, well, God has broken me. Trust me, before I have hot pepper temper of Basa people. But he has changed me. Because when you start your story, I say, hey, it's too much information for me first. You have to forgive in order for you to come in the area of battle. That is one. For you to be in heavenly realm, that is one. Now when you are prepared, now we can launch an attack against the enemy. And we are fighting a spirit. We are not fighting a person. If you don't understand that, how can I teach you warfare? You have to understand it. Hallelujah. Jesus came as a man, standing on man position, put on man to deal with Satan, to deal with his enemy. God needs to use men. If he use you, Viola, he will use you, Sean, he will use every one of you as a man, but on heavenly principle, not on earthly principle. You need to let him use it on heavenly principle. We want to bring our own understanding on the things of heaven. It will not work. It's why prayer does not work. Hallelujah. So, to deal with the enemy, God needs to use men. If men does not cooperate with him, he cannot do anything. So if you sit and you tell me all of the problem of your family, but you don't want to pray according to God's will, nothing will change in your family. Nothing will change. He has to use you. Likewise, to bring salvation to men, God also needs to pray. Without men praying 
for the soul of sinner, God cannot save men. The salvation of any person is the result of someone praying for him. For each one of you here, it took a man to put you in this group to learn how to pray warfare. It's not an angel who came and had you, Michelle. It's someone. So someone may be praying for you somewhere. It's why you was in connection and you was able to enter the group. So you will always use a man to do the action. Amen? So every genuine prayer is a prayer of casting out demons. I explain. Suppose a certain brother home has no peace. You enter a house that has quarreling, 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 quarreling. The husband and wife quarrel. If you really know that pr what prayer is, you will be able to utter fighting prayer for them and cast out the quarreling demon from their home. You don't sit down and listen to the, the woman putting down completely her husband or the husband putting down completely her. You know that this one is certain will enter into this relationship. So from heavenly places, you bind that spirit of quarreling and you cast it out. Peace come. That is your authority. You don't get into in between. And before me, he has this sister. Her name was Deborah. And Deborah usually call him on his phone. You see, sister, we are Christian. But my husband, he's a fake. All of this is earthly. You know what is going on in the thing. You burn the spirit. You cast it out. You bring peace. And you continue your way. Hallelujah. So the husband and the wife quarreling because Satan has gained a position between them. When you pray for them, on the other hand, you are bringing in the God's kingdom and on the other end, driving away God's enemy. Then between them, there will be God's authority, but not the power of Satan. This is true prayer. It's a prayer of authority. When you come in every family, every family will join. When you are ready for prayer, because some people join the group and they are not ready for prayer. Some people join the group and they're still arguing that deliverance does not exist. We never force you. We never force you. We never even tell you, okay, if you don't follow our opinion, just go. No. No, it's not our will. Our will is everybody is covered by the blood of Jesus. Your time of revelation will come also. But when you come with your family and you have your problem, and you say, now I'm ready. We give you the time of fasting and everything. Then we come together in agreement as you follow the will of God to bring peace in your family. We cast out the demon that is tormenting, but we bring you the kingdom. We bring you the peace of the kingdom. We bring you the gospel of the good news. So the prayer of authority is always removing what is bad and replacing for what God has for this person. Okay, let me go further. There's a lady, she wrote a lot of books on warfare. Her name is Mrs. Penn Lewis. What she said first is, the position of ascension in Ephesians 2, 6, in order to have the, uh, in order to have the fighting prayer in Ephesians 6. So you have to master Ephesians 2, 6, in order to, Master Ephesians 6, 18, like 10 to 18. Ephesians 2, 6 say, I'm sitting in heavenly realm. Understand that first. This needs to be your understanding. If you don't get anything from everything I've said from the beginning of this teaching, get the understanding of Ephesians 2, 6, who you are. You are sitting in heavenly places. So you get out of the story of this person did this to me. This person did this to me. This person is a, is a witch. This person, get out of there. Because I've been teaching at three years. People still ask me the same question. And if my cousin is a witch doctor, what should I do with him? You have to sit in heavenly places. And from heavenly places now, you command that spirit of witchcraft to live. Or you command that spirit to get out of the people he has bewitched. As it's done, there I know you are sitting in heavenly places. You don't just entertain story on what the person has done. You are doing advertisement for Satan. 
Amen. So she said, Master Ephesians 2 6, in order to master Ephesians 6 10 to 18. Master your position, who you are, be one with Christ. Master the mind of Christ, not the mind of men. Master that position, who you are, where you are sitting in heavenly places. How what you say it is established. Build that spiritual muscles of who you are in the spirit. Then go to Ephesians 6, 10. Principality, domination, throne, kingdom of darkness, power of darkness. You say one word, they hear you. Amen? So once you fall, the earth, and you are under Satan, when you go down, when you go on the earth, you are under Satan's hands. And you will not be able to deal with him. Because you are you are dealing with the same. You are dealing with emotional things, with anger, with all of the things he used. Daniel's prayer was on one hand on earth and on the other hand in the heavenly realm. His condition and nature were entirely heavenly. So his prayer was able to deal with the enemy. All genuine prayers are twofold purpose. On the positive side, to bring in God's kingdom and on the negative side, to cast out Satan. That is a power of prayer. You are praying for anyone. You need to be able to bind the spirit that is negative and bring in the spirit that is positive. This kind of prayer if, uh, affect God's success as well as certain defeat. The more we pray this kind of prayer, the more severe will be certain defeat and the more God's kingdom will come. Now I'm going to the last. Prayer of authority against the enemy, too. This is the principle of prayer. Not only when we pray for big things, big things but also for small, for God's will, for God's work. Even when we pray for ourselves, for health, for family, for business, always pray from heaven and realm. But now we need to understand something. Can you read Ephesians 2.2? 2? Ephesians 2.2 2 says, In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you what the, the verse means. I'm sure you understand it already. We are praying from heavenly realm, from heaven. The person we are fighting is in the air. They say, the prince, according to the prince of the power of air, sometimes we say the second heaven is where Satan is. He's in the air. And we are living, our body are on this earth. And on this earth, Ephesians 2 to tell you, the spirit of the prince of this air walk in the children of disobedience. The spirit of the one who is on the second heaven walk inside the one that, that are the son of disobedience. Therefore, when we pray, if we pray on earth, we be under his control. You pray based on your emotion, you are under his control. You pray based on anger, you are under his control. But if we move to the heaven and pray, we pray down from above. In military strategy, this is to observe and control the situation below by occupying the high ground. Remember how the, they start building drones, you know drones, those little, little, uh, they look like little helicopters, very little, but they allow you to see what is going on from up. You remember, uh, Sad, uh, not Saddam Hussein, the other one, the other one they killed. Osama bin Laden. It was a drone that we give you the position. They were able to see what was going on in his house, the wife inside his house, and all of this. It was a drone. It was just a drone telling him from up what is going on on earth. So from up is when you can know what is going on and where is the enemy and how he's acting. Amen. This is exactly like the prayer in Revelation 8. 
you pray the prayer and revelation, it, those are heavenly prayer. Why? They are received in heaven. Can you read Ephesians, uh, Revelation 8, 3, 4, and 5? Amen. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Amen. That is the result of heavenly prayer. So first, the, as far as the fragrance is concerned, the prayer is sent to God. You pray heavenly prayer, the will of God is sent to God. As far as God's accomplishment is concerned, the prayer were prayed down from heaven. They were piled down from heaven because they were all uttered in the heavenly realm. You pray from heaven. Now, concerning God's accept, acceptance, our prayer should be like sweet smelly incense ascending to the throne. Your prayer need to be a sweet smelly incense. So you don't pray the prayer that has no sense for God. You pray a prayer of anger, of someone who's angry, mm -mm. it's going nowhere. It's a nonsense prayer, you will not reach him. You pray a prayer of someone who wants to get revenge at all ways, it will go nowhere. It's a waste of time. It has to be a sweet smelly incense. That means his will need to be there. His will need to be there. Some people will take the Bible and say, anyway, if I pray the word of God, it's the best. Trust me, if the word of God is for you, you can pray. But if it's not from you, that means if you are manipulating that word, just to have what you have, you are wasting your time too. You have to be as the word is asking you, the condition of the word. But about the dealing with the enemy, our prayer should be poured down from the throne. You remember verse 4 say, what we have for verse 5. They say, after the angel pick up the prayer, mix it with the incense, what happened? Voices, thundering, lightning, earthquake. This is the way he sent back the answer to your prayer. You will see some prayer like you have been praying, praying, praying. The day you decide to pray the right prayer, the solution is immediate. Before you was too angry, before you, was, you want vengeance, before you want. And one day you pray a certain way. The door open right away. Why? You learn how to pray, trust me. He was refusing the first prayer you was given to him. Now you pray the right prayer. He answered. So we need to understand this. All true men of prayer are seated together with Christ in the heaven and pray from the throne. And I think, I, I don't know for you, but this lesson, it will help you to eliminate a lot of requests of prayer that are nonsense for God. Some of them, you say, God has spoken to me already. I know it's his will. So I just need to find a Bible verse to confirm again and pray this prayer to God and be consistent because the prayer of a righteous man, the earnest prayer, earnest prayer, earnestly you pray and it come to pass. But if you pick up something and you say, oh, it's my will, it's my right, don't pray nonsense prayer because you know it will not bring you anywhere. You'll be frustrated after. Amen? Amen. I want to open the floor. Amen. I want to open the floor for question. This is the end of my teaching. I hope it helps. Don't tell me all of these people. Or oh, I was so boring. Rev. <laughs> It was so powerful. My question is, when you're praying on your emotions and those prayers aren't going anywhere um, in terms of 
God and the, the heavenly realm because you're not in the right position, are they going, is the enemy doing something with them? I just wanted to know if there's any kind of retaliation or something going on. He banged you already through your emotion if you cannot get over your emotion and think right. Okay. Thank you. I'll give an example because perhaps people will think that, oh, that this is too hard like a class. When I started praying for my husband to come back, we were separate. I was so angry. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because pride was there. I want him coming back begging me because he left me. You understand? Almighty me. You see the pride? Yes. Uh huh. So vengeance, anger, all kind of stuff you can imagine. And cursing them every time I can think about it, I curse them. He never answered those prayers. Mm. I was praying for people. People get their own answer. Mine, he never answered. Until he starts showing me what was wrong. You said the earnest prayer of the righteous. Are you righteous? Mm. Look what you did. Look what you did. Look what you did. And I start looking at myself and fixing the things inside me. Amen. When I fix it, then he opened a way for me to see how the enemy was manipulating. And when I saw how the enemy was manipulating, I said, okay, show me the way. And he gave me an advice to a friend who told me. It was a situation where you have a blessing, and my blessing was marriage, but someone stole it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So he brought me to a verse through my, a sister who said that every time someone steals something from you, you bring it to the court. And if the person is a judge, he has to pay seven times. And it's the first I use. Because now it showed me a way. But before, I was punished doing the wrong prayer. Because I keep praying the prayer of vengeance. And yeah. nothing was happening. Now when I came with the prayer of righteousness and uh, restoration, because the word say, this person, had, and I saw that in the dream, the person was stealing something from me. This person has stole this, this person has stole this. Father, show me the way. I use the word. I say, your Bible say, I bring the person, the, the thief to the court. Let it be restored. The next day, the person called me. And I didn't pray to kill the person. I didn't send the fire to the person. I just prayed a prayer that say, I need restoration. Mm -hmm. You get me? Yeah. And it's the way restoration came. So emotional prayer, they say store the, the tears. That is good and everything. Mm -hmm. But you have to come to the place of heavenly realm where God has put you. Don't come back down on earth. It's not your position here. The enemy will eat you. Go to the position where you are, where you can rule. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yes. Rev. Yes. I have a question. Um, you say uh, not all promises uh, belong to us in the Bible. So mm -hmm. how, do I, how do I know which ones belong to me? When you read that, uh, when you read, analyze first who it was promised to. Yeah, uh, uh, in the Old Testament, mostly it's uh, the children of Israel. Some of uh, the children of Israel, but sometimes we read just verse, you understand? We go in and we choose the one we want and we go. We have to read the things in his context and see in what condition that promise was made to the person. And see if you are corresponding to the profile that person is. Okay. You mm. get me? A lot of people are claiming the things, but they are not right in the way they are acting. Okay. So you cannot receive what is not yours. If Mama Onita has her children and they need to eat lunch, let's say at uh, seven, uh, lunch at 12, if Paulette, who belonged to Cameroon, sneaked <laughs> in 
mm. on mm -hmm. the table and sit down and try to eat the rice of Mama Onita. Even if you are kind, you will ask us, who are you? Mm -hmm. You get me? Because yes. the blessing belongs to your children first. Yes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we act like that. We get something, we say, oh, this is good. Let me use it. But are you in the condition of being considered son of God? Are you in the condition yeah. of being considered son of Jacob? Are you in the condition to be considered Abraham's son? It's not everything to say, I am. You have to be in the condition, spiritual condition. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you. Thank you, Rev. Uh -huh. I need to understand that. Thank mm. you. Mm. Is there any other? Rev? Yes, dear. I know I posed it as a, as a joke, the question that I was asking, but I'd really like to go back to that um, question before, that um, for someone who's wishing or praying for a partner, a spouse, mm -hmm. how best can a person position the prayer to quicken their spouse to come? if there's some type of delay for that person to come, so to speak, because obviously you can't tell the angels to go fetch fire and put it under him so that it gets hot and he starts moving. But, you know, you have first, thing. you have first to ask God about your marriage and see, mm -hmm. because when, when I was preparing this at the same time, I was arguing because there's revelation there. I, I discovered myself when I was preparing the class mm -hmm. and, Say God, this is not right because most of the people we are training, we just say it is not good for men to be alone. Yes. And we go to Genesis 22, um, I think it's 22 18 or something like that. Or no, it's Exodus 22 18 on witchcraft. Genesis, oh, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as soon as I say that, he said, No, I did that promise I gave to Adam, I didn't say it was for you, all of you. <laughs> He said that to me. I was writing. I said, but this is the main one we are using. He said, you are using the wrong one. He said, look again. You understand? He created Adam. Adam was alone. He said, it's not good for men to be alone. He called uh, Adam men. So let me find a female. You understand? Then he created Eve and everything, put them together. We mm -hmm. come after and we just join and we want the same thing. He said, no, look for order. First, ask my opinion. I say that. Let me ask your opinion. What is your opinion? He said, look again in the Bible, it's written that you find a verse for that. You find mm. a verse, and then between in between finding the verse for you, ask me first what is my opinion according to what you are doing. Wow. You get me? Because a lot of us we want something first, and then we say to God, agree. Just agree. You understand? Mm. It's not like that. You are living the will of God. The, the life you, are, you try to live now is the perfect will of God. Even if you are not there yet, you want to live the will of God. So you have to ask him, what is your will concerning you? Amen. Amen. Concerning this area. He tell you the will. He give you the first. Now you can command the thing to come to you. Mm. Now you can comment, you understand? Amen. But that area we don't do. And when we go sometime in church and we start praying, it's like lottery. Mm. So Mama Olita will be praying for the same thing. You'll be praying for the same thing. Mama Olita, she prays like she pray her number. Her horse come in the right order. Oh, she won. <laughs> but we don't understand the techniques of being, asking God first, what he has to say. Have you an encounter of, according to what we are praying for? And we get frustrated because we say, eh, when you come to me, you know me, just go and pray, just go and pray. But if I don't tell you how to pray, you can be praying doing the same error every day. Amen. Amen, that's quite a stunning revelation. Another question? Rev, if I may ask. Mm -hmm. uh, you touched on uh, 
subject about vengeance and uh, and uh, whatnot, I I've come to realize that uh, in my prayer life, there's a lot of things I was asking for that I was uh, hoping for, but there's some uh, topics that I actually did not specifically uh, address because most of the time I pray in tongues, but I've been using two two Thessalonians. One six, which says, since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you. So, uh, my prayers usually for people who try to harm is is back to the center and request for justice. Do you do you think that? this maneuver would be going out of context of getting an answer. Exactly. I think you have your answer with the class of today. You have I, to quit. I, no, you have to I quit to... praying on vengeance. The vengeance belongs to God. When you pray and you want to take the place of God, he will not answer you. No, when I do that, I'm requesting. I'm just asking. I'm not. You are asking. It. Yes, you are asking. But I think that if you apply what we have learned today, mm -hmm. the first thing is to ask him what is his opinion, not your opinion. Your opinion mm -hmm. is I've been wrong and I need vengeance. His opinion has to become your truth. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and like I was saying, this is actually something I was not doing before, but I realized that I didn't do. Mm -hmm. So I, I started doing it, and in the spirit, I saw some, some results. Some results, exactly. Because you are asking. Meaning, mm -hmm. meaning that even if I go way back to when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. you know, the Lord revealed me what one of my best friends was doing he was already initiated this guy he's uh, from greece and it shook me but yeah it's just by up, up, applying uh but i mean you mm. what what you what you say and what you is very important because i'm i'm telling you already that the new testament is very very important on that and saying that you don't go after them with flesh you go after the spirit and you go from heavenly rim in order for you to have success but if you put your prayer and focus to trust me you are losing the those are earthly prayer those are earthly i've seen a lot of people doing earthly prayer they just want to hurt. There's one pastor uh, who's in Uganda, Kayanja, Robert Kayanja. He said that you have never seen people wicked like Christian. When you say, and it was like a joke, he said, when you say pray for your pastor, people will just be murmuring and mumbling and everything in their mouth. Mm -hmm. As soon as they say pray for your enemy, everybody wake up. Some take shoes, some take chair. They want to break the neck. They want to remove the eyes from the, the orbit. They want things that even in bad movie they don't do. That reveals the heart of the Christian. Because it's what they're, they're, they're expressing the passion. They're expressing what is in the heart. And sometimes it's very dark. When you are ruling, Remember, you told Jesus that it's not me living anymore. It's Christ living in me. Can a dead person do vengeance? Mm -hmm. No, it's Christ. If it's Christ living in you, he will put you a court of righteousness. That means you have to rule according to his will. Then you see the light shine your way. It's written. You see the light shine your way when you rule according to God's will. But as soon as you do your specific program, you say, God, you need to answer here. 
trust me, you are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. Mm -hmm. The second thing I wanted to touch upon is uh, the sister that was talking before me. She mentioned, uh, she asked a question about uh, uh, having a spouse or attracting a spouse. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I wanted to say that I think it, I, it was last year um, when Reverend uh, Babalola came. He came with some uh, confessions. Yeah, I remember. Yes, part of them was uh, uh, for a spouse. And let me tell you, it works. Mm -hmm. When I personally, when I did it, I felt rain coming upon my head. Yeah, I didn't say it's not. It's not working. I never say his prayer never no, works. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying it to share, for oh, okay. Whoever was there, yeah. That's that's yeah. all I have to say. Okay, the prayer works, but you pray the will of God, and I don't think God will put somewhere that He doesn't want you to get married. I think that you just need to ask His will, consult His way, and go all the way because there's a loss of marriage too. L U S T. We have loss of eyes, loss of the flesh, loss. There's a loss of marriage. Mm. Ah, you know when we are doing deliverance, we see all kind of things, and people don't know that Satan. When you say I want to get married, he can send you the wrong one too. It's not to scare you, because he know that you are so much after marriage that you settle for the things that you think. Oh, this one. If I don't, I let this one pass. You have to be careful. All of this, you need to ask God. Be in the closet with God for it to happen according to God's will. Then you are blessed. Amen. 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 Is there any other question before we pray? Yes, just one last question for me, please. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, but I really appreciate having this teaching, but uh, yeah, it has left me with a, a, a bit of confusion. Anyway, I'll, I'll get you on the, um, I'll, I'll inbox you on this one. So my okay. question is, uh, 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 could you give me a sample of uh, a prayer to place me uh, positionally on the bed and the round? On the? I didn't the hear the... On the crown? On the, on the heavenly places. The prayer on, on the, the heavenly on, on the throne, yeah. On the, a prayer that, I, that, that can help me ascend to the throne before I start commanding and doing all these things. Is there a specific prayer that I should uh, do to get me to be uh, the, the seated on the, the, on the throne? You are already seated there. This is why we are doing this class. Because a lot of people, when they pray, they think they start on earth and then they go there. No. He say you are resurrected with him and sitting on heavenly places. You are sitting there, Onita. That means now, when you have your request or when you want to do your prayer, it's based on your position that you rule. It's based on your position that you react and i gave the example to when i was responding to sister gatoni that when i was praying first the prayer for my marriage you understand mm. i want revenge in my heart i want to wound someone because i was wounded i want to break someone because i was broken okay those were okay. earthly prayer they were going nowhere no way. Sometimes yeah. I pray that he come and do even worse than what he did before. Right. But okay. as soon as my heart changed and I understood that this is not me, it's the enemy using my emotion, trying to bind me with my emotion. And I got free of that. I said, no, Satan, I rebuke anger. I rebuke all of this. Then I start praying. What is your will, God? What is your will, God? What is your will? Because my emotion even was telling me, oh, what are you doing here? You can divorce. We are in America. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> God said, no. I don't want you to divorce. This is my will for your marriage. Then he told me his will. I said, wow. If this is his will, so how should I pray? 
And then I start praying according to his will. Yeah. And the door opened. Right. So it's the condition of, condition of my heart. Of heart. So yes, all of you. us who are listening to me, you are already in heavenly places because all of us are safe. I accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. We are in heavenly places. Yes, I knew that, but I was just a bit confused. I think it was a, a bit deep for me. Okay. We are yes, getting deeper think was, because we yes. need to fight the enemy and not mm -hmm. waste time. Now, when you have a case, Mama Onita, it shouldn't be like three days or four days. When you have understanding, you do it in 15 minutes and you go. Amen. It's why we are getting things that uh, meet, you yes. understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Dedra, you have a question? How do you? Oh, I have so many questions, but I have, I think I have two. One is about marriage and one is about, of course, the workplace. I recognize that there was, um, with the workplace, I recognize that there was, um, an issue with the the persons or um, that had made these claims against me at, at the workplace. So I started from that place of father heal them, you know, whatever, whatever. And I thought I had addressed it from that point. And then out of the blue, it just escalated. And I was like, wait a minute, I was praying for them. I see, um, I thought I saw their um, iniquities. So therefore, I was like, okay, that was a question. Like, well, I've been praying for them. Like, I would say, like, you know, people would even come to me. Like, she's saying this, she's saying that. I would say, just go pray for her. Even when um, things would, um, other people would say stuff. I'd say, just pray for her. So then when it came down to it, I'm like, well, I prayed for them and they still came and attacked me even harder. So was that an earthly prayer? Because you was, even if you was doing the right thing, you was just doing that in compensation. You say, okay, if I do this, God, we said, we, we do that for me. Did you ask God first? No, I just saw that I saw that there exactly. was a exactly. rooted issue with them. No, it was your understanding. You have to ask him first, okay, this is going on. What do you think? How do I pray? How do you understand? The thing we is, we go a lot according to our understanding. Is what giving us the wrong um, departure, if you want, the wrong beginning in most of the issue we have. Like, I am hurt. So I need restoration right away. No. You go, you say, God, you are the one who knows, who knows everything, the heart of the people and everything. What is your opinion regarding this? What is your opinion regarding this workplace? What is the spirit that is hovering here that I need to bind? You understand? understand. Sometimes you may be praying for the person, but the, the strategy was to bind that spirit. Because the prince of the air, hey, you are in the media. Yes. Okay. So it could be like to buy and you start another kind of prayer. It will not work because it's not the right strategy you need to use. True. That's probably what it is. And your so second prayer. That is question. what it is. <laughs> uh -huh. Your second question, do you have? My second question is again, like, you know, I. Uh, when my husband separated and he had this other relationship, I keep on trying not to take offense and I, maybe I just don't get it. I'm, I, maybe it's the same thing. Like I'm praying for them. I see that they have an issue. How do I? So again, I guess I have to go and ask God how to deal with it because it's, I don't, I'm not vengeful, but when the attack comes, I'm just like, what, why are you still doing this to me or us or whatever? So I guess it's the same answer. It's the same. Go back to God. I'm telling you, a, a, a pastor me have, I've been dealing with when in my problem, I saw a lot of men of God and everything. A pastor will not replace the communication you need to have with God. 
He will never mm. replace. You need to go yourself in the closet and say, Daddy, what is it about my marriage? When he say, Dedra, this is your husband. Give him respect. Take care of him. You will see that because you have asked him, he himself has released enough angel to take care of the other side. So you hear less and less and the case is settled because you have asked first to God. You did not go according to your emotion because what you do is you say, okay, let me behave like a good girl. I will not go after her. I will not do anything to hurt her. I will just say here, pray for my husband, pray for me. But you are still on your guard because you say, hey, you understand? Yeah. Uh -huh. But you go to God, ask God to settle it. Ask God to settle it. Let him tell you the way you need to behave. And he will remove all of this. I've been in that because I, when I was younger, I have a lot of, I have a strong spirit of jealousy in me. God has delivered me. A strong spirit of jealousy. But guess what? When he healed me, it's not that I don't feel jealousy anymore. But you can be acting up. We can be at somewhere and you are acting up in front of my husband. I just look at you and smile. Because I know it takes one minute from God to fix you. Amen. I don't need to fight you with my own strength. Amen. Brother Christian, you are there? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Reverend. I'm, I'm so, so happy of that because uh, I don't know why, why you are talking about me that way. Because uh, this is exactly uh, the, uh, what the, at a certain point of time, in, uh, there's no best marriage as you can, you can do best and worst. But at a mm -hmm. certain point of time, just go straight to the, to, to, the, to the owner of that soul and say, that she was going on. Tell, tell me what I can do. Exactly. This is exactly what you are pointing out because we have the tendency to use our opinion, go see this man of God, women of God, all these things. Or that is there waiting for you until you come back to him. Yes. Go in your closet. Go in yeah. your closet. You can run to prophet though. Mm. It's not a problem. Run to different people. It's not a problem. Go to God. It's why a lot of prayer no answer. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. I think there's no more question. Thank you, Brother Christian, for your uh, participation. Thank you so much. So let's pray. And I pray as you did your list of prayer. Go back. Everything that you know, this is earthly. Cross it out. Forget it. If you know this one, I did not ask God. Put ask God first and start asking God instead of praying for that. If you know God has promised already, just say, okay, let me find the Bible. What is the promise that attached more to what I want? Find it and start praying based on that promise. And you will tell me. You will tell me. Hallelujah. Can we put the slides on the forum for this? Sure, sure. Uh, Josie, we do that because she's the one doing the... Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. She will. She's the one. Okay. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this teaching. We thank you for everything we are learning through your hands. Father, every day we are learning, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we open our heart and we want to be sitting with you in heavenly places. We don't know how, Father, but we know that through your knowledge and your spirit, you are so merciful and you are so patient with us, Father. As we are understanding our position, teach us how to pray. As we are understanding our position, Father, break any bound of emotion, anger, of whatever the enemy has put on us that will not allow us to pray properly. Father, we pray that you open our mouth to justice. We pray earnestly to you that you bring us to the table where we understand how to rule, how to reign in prayer, that we do effective prayer all over the world father and people will be here they will be delivered and our life also will prosper in you and be happy thank you father for everything we give you praise we give you adoration we thank you jesus for everything and for this teaching of revelation let it reveal more to them as they are sleeping father 
Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Be blessed, all of you. Be blessed. Amen. God bless you. God bless, God bless you. you. Amen. 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 Bye bye. God bless you. Bye bye. 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 Bye.